I'm a big believer of, of calling something, you know, what you see on, you know, on the tin uh, is what you get. So um, we kept it very simple. Uh, so there's the health hub, uh, but then that breaks down into both physical uh, and mental um, well-being. Uh, then we had the financial hub, which, you know, again, does what it says on the tin. But that's about long-term protection, you know, for your loved ones, for your family and so on. So the sort of relatively boring insurances, uh, but also longer term savings. So uh, sort of things much more like pensions, but also ICEs and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then we had the lifestyle, um, which was trying to be there a little bit more fun. Um, but again, about work-life balance, um, but also the everyday savings. So slightly different uh, from the financial piece, but just trying to help people just save money on a day-to-day -day basis with their shopping, with you know discounts and, and on various things and so on. So those three sort of distinct hubs were the, was the core, the background, uh, the foundation to that whole flex piece. We were looking at our, our flexible benefit scheme. There was nothing wrong with it when I arrived, um, but it was very traditional, very paternalistic. Um, and we sort of said, well, you know, what gives us the company the right to tell people what they should be doing and all this sort of stuff. So we wanted to open it up a bit, add more choice, add more flexibility. Part of that was introducing this thousand um, pound sort of wellness allowance. Um, and it was really to reinforce how much we think uh, or how much we care about people's health and well-being. And I'd like to think that it is genuine and that it is authentic and that it comes across uh, in that way. Um, and we also wanted to be different in the marketplace. So, uh, you know, a thousand pounds is probably quite a lot of money. Um, a lot of people told me it was probably a little bit too generous. Um, but it's on a use it or lose it basis. So I know for a fact that not everyone uses it. Not everyone wants to go to the gym. Not everyone wants to, to sort of, um, you know, use it for their dental or whatever it is. So actually we end up saving about 40% of that allowance, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, but it does have that differentiator. It does have that wow factor. It is appreciated by people, even if they don't use it. The fact that they know that it's there I think does actually add some value to the whole piece uh, and the fact that they could use it, they could you know, pop to the gym if they were so inclined, if they wanted to. So it's quite powerful in that respect. I think, again, uh, it has that paternalistic piece to it. You know, what gives us the right to tell people what they should be doing, potentially with their money and or the company contribution as well. Um, but here it was also looking at how things have changed and, you know, it comes back to, you know, there are people coming into the workplace, I suppose they've already been in the workplace, but with debt, people trying to save up for a car, people trying to save up for a house, uh, you know, who's to say what people's priorities are in terms of their financial, um, financial needs, financial objectives are. Um, and yet here we were saying, oh, well, you had to just put it into your pension. So there's a statutory minimum, 8%, uh, which we have to meet. So uh, basically what we said is you can flex your pension contributions from you and the employer uh, up or down, uh, but there's a, a minimum limit of 8%. Um, but then you could then put that money into other vehicles. So we then introduced uh, Neighbour, which is a debt consolidation vehicle, we introduced uh, corporate ISA in order to allow people to save um, for a car, for education, for a uh, house or whatever it might be. So we introduced other products as well. Um, but we also said, you know, actually, if cash is what you need uh, in order to meet the household bills, you know, on a monthly basis, then at this point in your life, um, you know, you can take cash. Um, again, the big fear was that everyone would take money out of their pension, it would be a disaster and we, you know, financial ruin and all that sort of stuff. But actually, um, in reality, 3% did reduce their pension contributions. Um, the one bit I don't have is I don't know what they've done with that 3%. So I don't know if they've just taken it as cash or whether they're actually they put it into an ICER or, you know, I hope the latter. But as I say, it is their choice treating people as adults. Um, but the refreshing thing is 11% increased their pension contribution. And I think just treating people as adults, allowing people to have or make those choices themselves um, actually has a po positive effect. Um, I'm just, yeah, thankful in this case it worked. So, <laughs> and uh, you know, and I think it, it depends on the culture of the organization. I think, you know, we are, um, how can I say this sort of, uh, I don't think it would have worked at, you know, my previous organization, Santander. I don't think it would have worked in a retail environment where you've got call centers, you've got, um, you know, uh, bank branches. Um, you know, we've got a series of professionals, accountants, uh, actuaries and so on. Um, and, you know, it, it worked in that environment.
To the flex scheme, I think there's two elements. There is the information that you give people uh, in order to make them or let them make an informed decision. And then the benefits or products or whatever you want to call them that, that support that. Um, and I think you've got to have both. Um, and certainly with regards to the stuff that we did on the financial side of things, and especially if we were going to allow people to flex their pension, you've got to give them the knowledge, the information, or at least the resource to find out the knowledge and information to make those informed decisions. Um, and I'd like to, I don't think that was the only factor, but I think that was one of the factors that meant actually a lot of people increased their pension, pension contribution because we suddenly gave focus to it, we suddenly gave them information, we suddenly you know, started to raise it up the agenda as far as they were concerned, and actually that, that brought it to the fore. Um, and the piece that we want to go after next is, is health and well-being, uh, and particularly, you know, mental um, well-being. Um, so that's, you know, and it's the information space. We, we kind of got the products, the products, the, you know, the, sort of the, the PMI, the everything else that sort of supports that from a health perspective. But it's, it's helping people understand, um, you know, the triggers or whatever it might be that, that sits behind that. So that's sort of the next chapter, the next bit.